Welcome you guys. Welcome back to my channel. This is Girl Shalima Monique for those of you who are new to my channel. So now that you know who I am, go ahead and smash the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, so whenever I upload a new video, you'll be the first to know. And don't be scared to share, comment, and hit the thumbs button and tell your friends about my video. If you're not new, welcome back to my channel. Now let's jump right into let's this video. Do this video. Video, let's do this video. Video, anyway, you guys, tonight I have a QA questions for you guys. Like I did a live on Facebook a couple days ago and I asked you guys to ask me whatever question you guys want to ask me. I will respond with a video with all the questions and answers to all these questions that you guys want to know. There was an outpouring of questions. A lot of you guys want to know a lot. And I'm going to try my best to answer not all of them, but most of them. Not most of them. 20 questions. I picked 20 questions out of the ones them. Because there was a lot of people asking the same questions, so I picked the 20 best questions that I'm going to answer, you guys. And, um, yeah, some of my friends asked me questions, you know, so we'll jump right into this video. There's a lot of people want to know more about my life, and I'm willing to share. I want to be transparent with you guys tonight and share everything about my life. Um, work life, romantic life, social life, everything is open, and I'm going to share everything with you guys tonight because you guys want to know the tea because you guys see me posting and posting and sharing videos but there's a lot of questions I know a lot of people are asking and I'm going to go ahead and answer all you guys questions so just go ahead and watch this video all the way through to the end you guys and share this video and the juicy answers to all these juicy questions that you guys want to know it's gonna be at the end of this video and yeah do not skip it okay Watch it all the way through. You heard me. Okay. So, I have all the questions right here. All the questions, I have them right here. Um, they're not in any random order. Um, but, of course, the juicy ones, I'm going to be at the last. Because I know you guys want to know the tea of what's going on. So, let's get right into the questions. Oh my god, I gotta drink me some water. I'm drinking water tonight, you guys. Mm. Oh my god. Oh! Ah, you guys wanna know the tea? You guys wanna know the tea? Anyway, the first question is What made you decide to get into hairstyling? So that was my first question. What made you decide to get into hairstyling? Um,. I've been doing hair for over ooh, 25 years. I started doing hair when I was 10 years old. I had a lot of hair and um, I didn't like how my grandma used to comb my hair. She used to put these two big cornrows in my hair. Most of you guys, most of you guys who have a lot of hair and you know those old grandma plaits, we call them the grandma braids. And she used to put like two big cornrows in my hair and it was so poofy and I didn't like them. And so I would cry and take them out and go to school with my hair wild and then my dad would whoop my butt and it would go on every day. Because I would take it out because I'm that stubborn. I would take out those braids and get to school. Either I let my friends do it or I just wear it like that and just be stubborn. And then my dad would whoop my butt and then I would cry and it would be like a repeating pattern. So one day I decided to sit and box braids my own entire hair all day. He did not harass me. He didn't ask me to do anything. He saw that I was doing my own hair and he said, like, let me let her do it because I know she just didn't like her grandma doing her hair. And from that day, I had always been doing my own hair. It's rare I let somebody do my hair. I've always been doing my own hair. And then that transition into me start doing all my cousin's hair because they saw that you know I was good at doing my own so I started doing their hair and just it just went from there. The love for hair just was there. And from that point, I fell in love with hair. So I've been doing hair since then. And I'm still doing it. My love for it is a little dying out. Like, I'm starting to lose 
my passion for hair. I still love it, but the passion for doing it like a, like a long-term potential business, not there anymore. So I do it for the love and for the hobby, but I don't do it for my main income anymore. Because COVID came and mashed all of that up. So I'm hoping it will come back, but right now it's not there. So my next question is, what do you love to do that makes you real happy? So um, one of the things that I love to do, there's several, couple things that I love to do that will make me really happy. Like for example, traveling. Traveling fuels me and I think that is one of the main things that really makes me really happy. Besides my kids, it's, it's traveling. But it's something I like to do. So I wouldn't say more or less my kids. Something that I like to do that makes me really happy is traveling. I will travel up the street in a heartbeat and be super happy. Once I am out the house, I am away in somebody's hotel, I am on somebody's beach, I am extremely happy. But most of all, if I am in somebody's hotel, I don't have to wash, I don't have to cook, and I don't have to clean, makes me really, really, really happy. Like, really happy? Oh my God, like all my friends that know me, anybody, everybody that knows me, know me that just take her somewhere and she be good. Like, I love traveling. Traveling is what genuinely makes me happy. Um, that's one of the reasons why I can't work for people because I don't like the fact that you could tell me, oh, you can't go here, you can't take this vacation, you only could take that vacation, you only could take a vacation one time for the year. I cannot do that. You, I, I cannot live like that. I'm going to die. If you tell me I'm only allowed to take one week vacation per year, I am literally going to lose it, okay? So that's why her girl is an entrepreneur. She works for herself and she's her own boss, okay? Um, are you a homebody or outside body? This is a weird question because <sighs> when I'm home, I'm home. Like, I love being at home. When Let me just put it like this. When I'm in my hometown, when I'm at home in my town that I'm from, like in Houston, if I am in Houston, I am a homebody. But take me outside of Houston and I'm an outside body. So to say that is to say when I'm, I don't too care to like, I don't care about clubs. I don't care to go out. If I go out, I want to go to a nice restaurant. I want to go to a nice dinner, fine dining. That's why I'm, I love fine dining. I love going like getting dressed up and go out to a nice restaurant, stuff like that. I don't care for the clubs. I don't care for the clubs. I don't care for the clubs. I will go once in a while or, you know, when they have to really, really make me go. And my friends, they could tell you, you got to really, really make me go. Or if there's a nice concert, I will do a concert. Like if there's somebody that I really like, I will show up and yeah. But I prefer to be at home in my bed because I make my house so comfy and so warm so that I could be able to be comfortable in my home drinking a glass of wine. That's what I do. Um, Next question. What part of the states do you live and where are you originally from? I am in Houston, Texas, and I am originally from Belize. Those of you who don't know where Belize is at, Belize is in Central America. It's next to Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and we're the only English-speaking country in Central America. Period. Okay? So, yeah. Love me, love where I'm from. It embodies who I am, and it, what, it makes me who I am today, so... I'm always going to be Belize to the heart. Right? Yeah. How many kids do you have? You all don't know this yet? I have five kids. Five beautiful, lovely, mwah, muya kids. Okay? One daughter and four boys. Yeah. Love them to my core. What makes you got what made you got into YouTube? It's another question. What made you got into YouTube? Um <clears throat> I I love fashion, I love makeup, I love hair, I love the glitz and the glam, I love I love taking pictures, I love I have like ten thousand pictures in my in my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. And I know you do too. So I have about 10,000 pictures in my phone. So I love taking pictures. 
I love I I start doing YouTube for the fun of it and then I found out that I love editing like I love editing a video it's when I edit a good video oh my god I'm the happiest person for that day so I love editing and um, I love shooting the videos I love recording I love everything about the camera I always when I was younger wanted to be like an actor and stuff like that in my young little teenager village life days when I was back in the village we used to pretend you know we're acting and stuff in school you know I was you know I always wanted to act and I would do those acting you know gig in school like pretend acting role and um, in business management we did that you know and I, I always loved the camera I always love I always in my head that's you know how I had envisioned my life at one point so YouTube came natural to me like I love it and I want it to like skyrocket it's going to like just skyrocket I know my turn will come on it will just psh, and I am yeah, I love every minute of it I love you guys for watching my videos I, I thank you guys for watching my videos sharing my videos and just know we need to get this video this subscriber account up to 2000 and we are going to do a giveaway some bundles and a tennis shoes for men and bundles for females. But we gotta get this video to 2,000 likes. So go ahead and subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Subscribe, hit the thumbs button on a video and share that video. And I am going to pick from you guys. Cause I see who share my video. I see who hit the thumbs up and I see who subscribe. Yeah. So chop, 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 chop. Go do that baby. And let's get us to 2,000. Like every milestone is gonna be a giveaway, you know? Every milestone, I'm going to be doing a big giveaway. It's going to be legit, okay? So don't play with your girl. Next question. Um, I'm trying to save the juicy ones and for last, okay? So, like, bear with me. Like, I'm going through these. And I am. <laughs> because. <laughs> okay. What are some of the places you would like to visit in the near future? I know who asked me this question because I know I love traveling and um, I have three major major places that, I, that it gonna be a must and one I almost did one this year and why I'm saying I'm doing one of these trips next year because I already have some couple trips lined up for this year like some little trips here and there for this year so I'm not doing any major traveling because I already went to Belize and came back um, Santorini Greece and everybody knows that like, you Santorini Greece baby she is going we claiming it we manifesting it she is going to Santorini Greece you all need to google it look it up and see where it's at baby and see what it is it's everything of who I am and I am going to Santorini, Greece. You heard it here first. When you see her, you see her, you'll know, oh, ah, she said that's where she was going. And she sure did. My next place that I want to go is St. Lucia. Yeah, I am. Oh, St. Lucia is everything, okay? So I am going to St. Lucia and I'm manifesting it. Vision boarded and all already. I'm going to St. Lucia. And the third places that I'm going to that just popped up like a month ago is Thailand and I am going to Thailand okay it's travel you gotta you gotta travel like widens your horizon it educates you um I love merging into cultures of different races and I love tasting different foods um I love all that like I am not one of those like I'm not eating that like I'm not eating that like no I am going and I'm trying stuff some stuff I'm trying most of the stuff <laughs> and you know and, you know we got to do this thing so Thailand it is baby. we're gonna go be eating some frogs and stuff and mm, I don't know about that but <laughs> yeah so it's Santorini Greece st. Lucia in Thailand baby and we claiming that the next one is, did you regret having your eye surgery? Did you regret having your eye surgery? So all you guys know that I went to school with, that I grew up with, know me, I used to always been called sleepy. 
my tattoo right there. See that name right there? I don't know if you guys can see it. It says sleep it anyway. Um, because I had a lazy eye. And it's this eye. So you guys see that? No, this one to me is lazy now. So this one was lazy. I had a lazy eye. And um, I couldn't, like, it was getting worse. Um, I'm not showing if the thyroid what I, what affected it, but my thyroid issue that I had affected it, but it was getting worse. So my muscle in my eyes was getting weaker and weaker, which caused my eyes to be closing and it wasn't really opening as much. So any slight tiredness I got, like in the morning, it's wide open. As I go through the day, it will get smaller and smaller because my muscle is getting weaker and weaker and then I will be looking like, I know, it's okay. She ain't look like that no more. She ain't look like that no more. <laughs> anyway, do I regret it? No, I do not regret my eye surgery. But I do miss my little lazy eye. Because sometimes I look myself in the room like, I don't recognize this girl. Because all my life I had this lazy eye. Literally, I was born with it. Um, it was a condition I was born with and I always had it and it was just getting worse and the doctor was like It's time for us because it was affecting my eyesight We got a time it was time to fix it and get rid of it and I didn't regret it I love it like now for some reason I'm thinking like this eye is more open than this one and this was a lazy eye and now I feel like this one is no lazy and this is open so it is what it is I still partially kind of have it so I still love it so but I do not regret my eye surgery at all mm -mm. no I always think that was one of the best decisions I did was got my eye surgery okay let's get into the juicy 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 topic um you have been through a lot as a person what gives you the strength to keep focus and still make things happen Um, yes, I've been through a lot, like a lot, um, in my life for the age I'm at, I've been through a lot, like I've been hit with stuff left and right, you know, like some major, major life changes I've been hit with and, um, what makes me get up and make things happen and carry on and still be strong is my kids because I am their main take it, um, caretaker. So I look at them every day, I see them every day, and I as like I aspire to make myself better for them. Or I tell myself I gotta be strong, or I make myself be strong for them so they don't see me crumble, so they don't see me at any weak moment. They, and they do see me at some weak moments because we gotta let them know that, you know, this life and, and uh, stuff is not always peaches and cream. They will have tough, you know, they will have times where things will get tough, but you got to let them know that it's able, it's okay for you to get to that point, but pick yourself back up. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't stay down there. Pick yourself up. And I was always able to do that. I was always able to, like, pick myself up. No matter what situation was thrown at me, I was always able to pick myself up and make it happen for my babies and y'all. Yeah. So the next question, where do you see yourself 10 years from now if God's willing? Baby, 10 years from now that means my baby, my last plug will be off to college. God's willing, strength and health off to college so she got no more babies. So I see myself in a condo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a condo with no maintenance on the yard, with no like with nothing, a doorman, um, elevators and shit. That that type of condo. I see myself traveling, like literally traveling, and being on some of the beach, drinking margarita, with all my bills paid, and with fabulous health. And my walk with God. That's what I see myself 10 years from now. So I am see myself as 
a person living her best life. And I told my daughter, I don't want no grandkids. No grandkids. So 10 years from now, I need no grandkids. Oh my God, she gonna be old, be having kids. Oh my God. Well, she got kids. <clears throat> I'm not staying home and taking care of no kids. <laughs> That's so bad. I will take care of my babies. Oh my God. Anyway, I just see myself living my best life at 10 years from now. So I see myself living my best life. What other profession would you love to aspire other other than your prison and why? A couple and one is in works. I don't want to speak on it because I don't want to draw attention to it. So I have one then I got um, I would say microblading. So I'm adding that I you know I'm gonna start doing microblading. I looked into it, you know, you know. And I love to get that, get that under my belt. That is a profession I would love to do because it's, it's making some coins, like, you know. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'll be good at it. Can you see these eyebrows, baby? You see these eyebrows. I know you're going to want me to do your eyebrows. You're going to want me to do your eyebrows because she, she slays and bake these damn eyebrows, baby. She sure do. So, microblading, I'm doing that. Um... As I said, I have another one, which is my passion, my next passion, <laughs> and it's oh, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. You guys just wait and see. It's it's coming. It's coming. I promise, it's coming. But I do my next profession, a YouTuber. Yeah, how did I miss that? My next profession, becoming a YouTuber and an influencer more yeah they goes together in youtube and an influencer because you know i love social media you know yeah i love 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 social media the next question that we have is uh, what <clears throat> The next question we have is, what made you change your name on Facebook? I didn't think people noticed these type of stuff. I didn't think people take, pay attention to these type of stuff, but I guess they do, because I had a lot of questions about that. Like, a lot of people were asking me, why do I change my name on Facebook? Because first was Shalima Peace, which you all know, you know, me as Shalima Peace. And then I changed my name to Shalima Castillo, which you all know why. And then I changed my name to Shalima Monique. Um, let me just put it this way. I am not, uh, I love social media, but social media is for certain things. I take social media not as a way to broadcast my personal relationship. I will post a picture here and there, but it's not for me to broadcast my relationship on social media. I am not that type of person. I'm very, um, I'm very private with certain things. But my changing of my name on Facebook, I didn't know that that is a thing. Like I didn't know that people look into that. Like, oh my God, she changed her name. This and that, a whoop to whoop. This probably happening or whatever the case may be. I changed my name because of business reason. I am on a mission to, you know, to make things happen in my life, you know, whatever the case may be. Anyway, I'm in my, right now I'm on a path to build my career as an influencer and as a social media, um, social media influencer. So me changing my name and I don't just do social media just to do social media like I study the analytics of social media I study things that drive you know people to your page or whatever the case may be I study social media because I'm studying YouTube you just don't, just don't go there and boom you know you got to study the behind the scenes stuff of YouTube and social media and to become an influencer and um, most people are saying you got to brand your name, right? Um, and I think Shalima Monique, which is, that's my name. It's all me. Monique is my middle name. Shalima is my first name. 
So by me using Shalima Monique, it's a brand. It's for me. You never know what could happen in the near future, and you know things do. You know could happen, but me having Shalima Monique is more of so saying I'm branding that. So that's gonna be with me forever. It's gonna be with me throughout my career as an influencer. I'm not changing that. That is me. It's who I am. So that's the reason why I changed my name on Facebook. Okay. It's more so for me branding it. Because Shalima Monique is going to be a brand. And you hear it here first. She's going to be a brand. And you can't say, I didn't tell you. So, no, you know. You hear it here. Shalima Monique is going to be a brand. So, my Instagram is Shalima Monique. My Facebook is Shalima Monique. My Snapchat is Shalima Monique. My YouTube is Shalima Monique. Everything is Shalima Monique. So, when you Google Shalima Monique... You see this beautiful girl she popping up on you all screen okay <sighs> yeah mm. this one is really interesting you guys what do you look for in a person to be called a genuine friend and you guys comment and tell me what is you guys what do you guys think and what do you guys consider a genuine friend and what would it take for a person to become a genuine friend? I'm a good friend. I love, I don't have a wide circle of friends. My circle are very, very, very tiny. Because I don't trust a lot. Because I've been burned already by people that I think I could have trusted, you know? And, um... The two people, the few people that I have in my life right now that I consider my genuine friends are people that show up for me. What I like in a friendship is I like the fact that no matter what you go through as friends, if you are not able to sit and work things out, I don't like that. I I like I don't like you get mad and then you, you know, pull to yourself and don't let me know what's going on or don't want to talk about it like I don't like that I like the fact that if we're friends and I did something wrong to you I like the idea of you coming to me and say hey this is what you did wrong this is how I felt and let me you know evaluate the situation and come to say hey I apologize I didn't meant it that way this is how it happened or this is how I took it you know because one thing I can do, I cannot speak for your feelings. You cannot speak on anybody else's feelings because a person's feeling is their feelings. I cannot tell you, tell them not to feel that way and they can't tell me not to feel this way. But you at the end of the day and you're really good friends, you need to be able to come together and join that, break, um, you know, fill that gap and say, okay, this is where I messed up at, this is where you messed up at, and I'll be like, okay, this is where I messed up at. And I'm sorry and we're able to move on and it's like, but I don't like the fact that People can't have tough conversations. It's like, what is life without conversations? Life is nothing without conversations. Without communication, life is nothing. You have to be able to communicate. And you have to be able to stomach tough conversations. Like, you have to be able to sit down and say, okay, this conversation is tough, but I've got to sit here and sit to it. Like, to brush it off and sweep it underneath the rug, you will never be happy. You will always be miserable. You will never be happy because... You're just putting a band-aid on over something that is not healed. But what I'm saying is, um, you gotta able to allow yourself to have tough, difficult conversations. And I love having conversations. I love to know the fact that I could sit with a person and let them know exactly how I feel in or how I felt in that moment or how I'm feeling now. And they're able to sit there and hear me without making it feel like I'm trying to create a problem or an argument. I don't like that. That thing drives me freaking crazy. Because I'm the type of person like I like to, I might not speak on it right there and then. I will let you cool off, I cool off, but we coming back. Then we, when we start talking and kicking and laughing, I'm gonna let you know where you messed up at, and that's what I like to do. They be like, some people will be like, ah, why are you bringing that up? It's already in the past. No, we had never dealt with it. We silent it. And then we went on about our own business. Then we come back here and we kick it kumbaya. But we didn't talk about the stuff that created a problem for me or for you. It's not more so you rehashing up stuff. It's more so you're trying to fix it and heal it and move on. 
And the next thing I I I I like my friends them to I, when you come to my genuine friends, it's people that shows up for me when I didn't ask them to. People that always that promise me they're gonna be there and they're always is no matter what the situation may be, they always show up and always there. Yeah. And a person that I trust and are loyal to me and that won't stab me in my back. Don't stab me in my back. Those are people that are genuinely friends. And those are people that I Oh my god. Oh my god. It's like I'm very keen on be making friends. I'm very keen on friends now because people come around you and be in your life and they see what you have and they envy what you have. And then they will turn around and pretend they're your friends for years. They will pretend you're friends, but just to see what you have and envy and wants it. And the minute you let that go, they snack it up. Pick it up. And baby, sometimes not everything that glitters is gold. Oh, yeah, I like genuine people. Like, it's hard to find that these days. Like, next, next, next question. Um, are you single or, or are you married? A lot of people ask me that. I don't know why, because it's plain, it's clear. But a lot of people ask me, are you single or are you married? Are you single or are you married? And the answer is... I'm married. I am not single, I am married, I am in a full blown relationship, okay? So stop inboxing me. <laughs> stop being my inbox. Cause girl, you're not gonna catch a girl in your inbox. I am not gonna be in nobody inbox, ever. Doing nothing, saying nothing. I ain't gonna be in nobody inbox. So, but I like you guys all as my friend. I respect all that, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm not gonna stop somebody from saying hi to me. You know, it's just who you are, and I, I'm not, I, I'm not crazy. I know people are gonna say hi, duh. But um, yeah, you know, I still like you guys as my friend. But yeah, I'm not single. I'm married. Um. What do you love doing that? No, oh, no, I already did answer that. Um, what drives you crazy in your marriage life? In a marriage life? I think everybody could relate to this. I don't even think so. It's just a marriage life. I just think it's a relationship period. Things that drive me crazy. That blow my wig off my head. That would literally make my eyelashes fall off. And will literally just makes me pinch my skin is when they don't put the toilet seat down yeah you you don't put the toilet seat down I know you're laughing but it's not funny you don't put the toilet seat down and when a girl is sleepy and when she's in a deep sleep you gotta get up to the restroom and she sit down, thinking the seat is down, and she falls in the toilet. That's one of the nastiest. Oh my God, I want to throw water on you in that bed. It, it happens to you, I know, girl. Yes, yes. It, I know it happened to you. It happened to me. Yes. I know, girl. Yes. I know it happened to you, girl. It's one of the things that would drive me freaking crazy. I will blow a head gasket. And I, I need all the signs them in the bathroom. The whole wall I need a whole wallpaper to cover every walls in the bathroom to say, put the goddamn seat down. After you've been using, after use. <laughs> um do you like being single or married? Who asked that? Damn, I don't want to answer that. Can I drink? Damn, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> Do you like being single or married? Why do you want to ask? 
Anyway, I know you guys was like, why is it so hard? Like, why is it so hard? Why should it be so damn easy? Shit, single is nice. Being single is nice too. Being married is nice. Being single is nice too. I know. Yeah, girl, I know. You single, baby. I know. Mmm. Because it's so funny. When you're single, you want to be in a relationship. And when you're in a relationship, you want to be single. But I love being married. I love being married. <laughs> but I love being single too. Single is nice. Like single is no cooking and and no hinky pinky when you don't want it to and. And don't get hung up. <laughs> oh my God, going to sleep when you want, wake up when you want. Oh God. No cooking. Did I say that? Yeah. No washing. I said, oh, I don't wash either. Marin or not, I'm not washing. I'm sorry. We all washing our own clothes. We all folding our own clothes and we all putting our own clothes away, okay? I hate doing laundry. Everybody have their own basket and everybody go wash your own clothes. This is 2022 Mm-hmm because females are not staying at home cooking and washing now females working too I Work you work we both working. So are you go wash mine because I'm working too. So are you washing mine? No, oh, I thought so So you work I work you wash I wash You cook I cook God. See why I say you single life is kind of. I mm -hmm. oh, I love being married. I love. I don't. I don't know. I'm not answering this question. It's 50-50, okay? 50-50. 50 percent like being married. 50 percent. I. You like being single too? You. I know you like being single. Okay. The last and final. And final, are you over? The last and final question, you guys, is are you over with your cancer treatment and procedures? Um, I could say yes and no. And why I'm saying yes and no, because you never, as somebody who was, somebody who dealt with something like that, you will never stop going to the doctor. You will never ha stop getting a checkup. Like every six months, you got to go and get your blood works pulled and your blood works done every six months. So I will never be over with the procedure. It's gonna always be a reminder because every six months I gotta go. But just to go and get good news every six months is a blessing because some people don't get that. So it's a blessing to go and get that you know you're still good you're still in remission is a blessing so to end this night I will say right now I'm having my blessing and God is pouring it down on me and I am grateful and I'm thankful and I want to thank each and every one of you guys who has supported me throughout all that even by watching my videos I really like you guys and keep watching my videos you guys keep hitting that thumbs button you see that little thumbs button after you while you're watching the video just click that button that button is very important very important for you guys to click that button so just hit that little thumbs button and we'll keep it going okay so every time you watch the video click that button and then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed if you like more of this video let me know thank you guys so much for watching this video for all of you guys that made it all the way to the end Thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I really do appreciate you guys. Until next time, more time, and in due time, peace out.